Why are distinctions between armed conflicts so fundamental? We know that IHL rules are organized according to two main distinctions between international and non-international armed conflicts and between low intensity and high intensity non-international armed conflicts. We should now answer the following question. Why are these distinctions so important? As you will recall, international armed conflicts are subject to practically all the rules of IHL. This represents a huge body of rules, around 600 provisions. By contrast, non-international armed conflicts are only subject to a few very general rules. Indeed, low-intensity non-international armed conflicts are governed by only one provision, Common Article 3 to the four Geneva Conventions, which includes a few fundamental prohibitions. High-intensity non-international armed conflicts are the subject of a specific convention, Additional Protocol 2, which only contains 19 provisions. This clearly falls short of the level of protections that apply during international armed conflicts. We will study the content of these provisions in several other videos. That said, as you will recall, the sources of IHL are not only treaties, but also customary international law. The distinctions outlined above have their roots in treaty-based law. However, the practice of states during non-international armed conflict has tended to conform to the more onerous standards applicable to international armed conflicts. For instance, often there is a willingness on the sides of belligerents fighting in non-international armed conflicts to respect the principles governing the conduct of hostilities, such as the principle of distinction, proportionality, or precaution, that, according to treaty law, apply only in international armed conflicts. This practice has had an impact on IHL. In certain cases, it has led to the emergence of new rules of customary international law that apply in all types of conflicts and, accordingly, to an erosion of the importance of the distinctions recalled previously. However, one should not forget that, while it is universally acknowledged that customary international law has narrowed the gap in protection between all forms of conflict, there is still some debate about exactly which rules are binding as a matter of custom in non-international armed conflict. The ICRC's project to codify the customary rules of IHL provides an illustration of the controversy regarding the identification of customary rules. According to the ICRC study, most of the rules applicable to international armed conflict apply to non-international armed conflict through custom with a few notable exceptions to which we will come back later on, for instance, the status of prisoner of war or the law of occupation. However, certain states, notably the United States of America, raised objections to the study. They argued that the methodology followed was flawed and that the ICRC had adopted too low an evidentiary threshold for the identification of customary international law. While there are no authoritative international bodies to settle such interpretative differences in IHL, it is important to emphasize that ICTY and ICTR judgments, as well as the ICC statute and jurisprudence, also point towards an erosion of the distinction between international armed conflict and non-international armed conflict, without, however, completely suppressing it.